So now I'm going to show you how to do the wool freehand embroidery and this foot is number 43. So I'm going to tell the machine I've got number 43 foot on and what comes with the foot is this funny little piece of wire here that you put under here. You find where it can fit and then you, <laughs> you find where it can fit and then you push it up and what it does is it gives you a little loop here to thread wool through. So I'm going to sew this coloured wool here. And this is just tapestry wool. So what I'm going to do is I, you also get with the foot, you get this little wire. And you thread the wool through the wire. And that goes through here as a little guide. And then the foot has got a hole on the side of the foot so you thread how can I show you you thread the wire through the side of the foot and you pull the wool and then you thread it down through the base of the foot so you've got everything connected you do not lose that wire because it's a real nuisance then you put it on your machine you put your machine back to straight stitching and you drop your feed dogs down again. So what you're doing is you are freehand quilting again. So this time I might take my hot pink, pink thread off and I might just use a dark colour, a dark ur colour in the bobbin. So I'm just going to, I've cut this to size and I'm just going to freehand quilt around the base, but normally, oh yeah, I'll just show you. I'll do it on here and show you. So I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top. All of this is super easy. Oh, 43 foot. Um, 43, okay. Make sure you tell it. Feed dogs are down, straight stitches on. Foot up, bring your bobbin thread to the top and stitch in one place. Now, when you do this, this is super, super fun. When you do this, you can stipple, you can colour in, you can do anything you like. So if I want to, I can go around in circles. I can do little designs like this. Because I'm going to be covering the side bits over. good fun. You can decide when you start what you want to do. Anything. There's no rules. I'm just going to go basically up the side. Get rid of that. So what happens is my top thread I've matched similar so that I don't really see the stitch. And so every time I stitch, the needle is go oops, the needle is going through the center of the wool. And it's holding my design down. It's very, very clever. And it's very, very easy. So you don't have to have a particular pattern unless you want to. Can go anywhere. See how I can make different shapes? Wherever I go, my design is going to go with me. My wool is going to go with me. There is no rules. Very interesting because I, I'm just showing you how you can do it. So when you come around here, you can turn it or you can just leave it, do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to go across the top here just a little bit. Now what I might do here as I might just go across the top, just underneath my, it's quite thick here, oh I can't do that really, I'm just going to go back because that's too thick. So I'll just make a feature there, go backwards and forwards, make that a feature, then I'll come down a bit lower because that didn't work, so it doesn't matter, we'll just go down a bit lower, that's as far as we can get. Because remember, I'm going to be covering this over anyway, some of it. 
pull my... These are really great because you have enough on there to do a project without having to buy a whole ball of wool. So it's really good. And I'll make sure I kind of do the same at this other end. Kind of went up and went backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and made it a bit of a feature. And then I'm going to come down here and do down the other side. So there, there absolutely are no rules. You decide what you want and you just go for it. Make sure your thread's always feeding and having it up here. It feeds really well. Now, for the smaller machines, you get given a little loop that fits around your needle threader. So when you buy the foot, you get the right um, little loop for your machine. So you can see it's a little bit of fun and it's very, very organic. Unless you want to draw a design on there, you don't need to be fussy about it at all. Just pretend you're writing with your machine. I'll show you something which I'll cover over just for fun when we've finished here. Okay. So I'll just show you this. So if you want to, you can write your name. So just use it like a pen. This is my signature that I do on all my sewing. And then cut your thread. And take your work out. So I did my name. That's a little bit of fun. So now what I would do, there's my bag and it's a weird design. I don't know why, but I did. Then I can sew this on. And if I go, oh, actually, I really like seeing that border, then I'm going to cut, maybe cut this one a little bit smaller on this side because I quite like seeing more of that. So I'm going to chop that down. There's no rules. You can keep your bits of fabric you're chopping off and use it for another project so I think I like that and then if I go oh actually I want to see more of the green at the bottom I can chop this one off which I'm not going to do I'm going to leave it like that so now I can leave this darning foot off on if I like in fact hmm, let's do this I'm going to put a different thread on and remember I didn't lose my wire Here's my wire. I'm going to thread this through here. And I'm going to thread this through my little piece of wire here. Nope, not through there. Through there. So it can feed. Make sure you don't have a knot in your wool like you've got. Get rid of that. Now, where's my wire? There it is. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread, just one moment. I'm going to thread this through the hole in my foot. There. Foot down so I can pull that through. And now I'm going to thread it down through. Mmm, this is going to be interesting, can I? Oh, yep, thread it down through here. While the foot's on, that was a trick. There we go. And pop that somewhere where you won't lose it. So now, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to pull this through so it's nice and straight. So I've decided I'm going to sew this on with this wool. I'm going to turn my bag around. And I'm going to stitch this on with wool instead of um, satin stitching it or fancy stitch. I'm just going to use wool. So I just get it going. I'm going to do one layer and then I'm going to go back and do another layer. I might even do three layers, we'll see. We will decide. So this is just anchoring it down for now.
The beauty about this is I can go sideways. And I can go backwards. Oops. <laughs> I can go crooked. Doesn't matter. Just get it anchored. And I'll just stitch across the bottom to hold it. Right, now this time I will do it a bit tidier and go beside where I was just to um, fill in my wool. And I'll turn it this time so I can make sure I sew a bit straighter. Go through here. So you can see you don't have to be fussy about this because you're covering it over and we're going to be doing stitching over it in a minute. So this time I'm going to go backwards. Not very good at time backwards but I'm doing it. And going this way, I do it a bit tidier than this when I'm um, sewing normally, but I'm just quickly showing you because you don't have to be fussy about it. I'm filling in that little gap, that's good. Filling in that little gap, that little gap, whoops. <laughs> like a drunken sailor, fill in that little gap. Now here's what I do now, so I go, oh, yeah that's average, I don't mind it, but that's alright. So what I do then is I take this foot off, I put this foot on, which is my open toe embroidery foot. Now I get a really bright, bright thread and I put on a bright thread. Ooh, what colour will I use? Not purple. Definitely not purple. We will go with... I keep wanting to find purple, but I don't want to use purple. Well, I might actually use that, because this is quite a deep colour. And what I'm going to do now is, I am going to find a really heavy stitch that I like, that's going to stitch over the wool and change the outside wool completely. So I'm going to find in my quilting stitches, what did I use on this one? I used a cross, yeah, I'll just show you here. This one kind of crisscrosses. I'm going to use the one that goes straight. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just use a bright colour. Oh, and a tell my machine I've got my 20C foot on. And 20C foot, feed dogs back up. And now I'm going to do a stitch and it's going to completely change the look of that ugly wool I've done around the outside. And again, I'm going to let the machine sew by itself. So I'm just guiding it. So when you're doing this sort of work, you've got to think about layering. I'm layering everything up and changing it and not being really fussy about it because that is the fun of doing this type of work. So see I've totally changed that wool around the outside. Hang on, I've got a piece of thread there I need to cut to make sure I don't get caught up. So when you come down to the end you want to slow down and turn but this is just a fun stitch you can do sewing over everything and changing the look of something. Weird but true. So I'm going to push pattern end in the minute so it stops at the end of the pattern. And then I'm going to lift up my foot and I'm going to start from here. All right. So I'm on pattern begin and now I'm going to go from this end. So it's locking it off. And then I'm going to go down this way. See, that looks so much better. 
because I only use the wool as a base, not as a feature. But it just gives you something under there and it looks so much nicer than sewing on the raw edge of your fabric you've made. So be creative and have some fun with it. I'm going to chop off that ugly little corner there that I missed. There you go, gone. Fixed. This is interesting here. I don't know what I was thinking there. Obviously went very crooked. And pattern end. This time I stopped in the right... Oh, <laughs> cuts off automatically. Lifts the foot up, start here. And away you go. So this should have been over there, but it's organic. Organic. Still looks good. But you can see the fun of doing the freehand stitching with the wool. Quite often I'll do that on wool garments. If you've got a hole in a wool garment, you can make a design, a flower or whatever. And once you've finished this part, if you want to, you can go and add other bits to this part as well. You don't have to worry about if you want to add more to it, you can. But don't overdo it because you can't overdo things. And there you've totally transformed your ugly bag that the company's now no longer in business so you might as well use the fantastic bag. Cut your thread. So now all I need to do, check this out. One of our very, very, very clever ladies has made this very cute little boy here. So now what I can do is I can put my bag back together and I just line up my sacking here and I use Yvonne's gorgeous little hedgehog and it's my clip holder and I put my quilting clips and hold my work and then I'll get the same, I'll put on a, a jeans denim 90 needle I think and sew my binding back onto my bag. Do that side and this side. I'm liking this method. I think this is a great method. You don't have to make a separate binding. You've um, just used the side of your bag and extended it out and made a binding. And I've got my old thread here. I haven't even pulled that off yet. You can pull that off before you sew the next one. And if I wanted to, I could sew a fancy stitch on there as well. So whether you're just folding your binding like this or adding your other binding back on makes absolutely no difference. But just use your clips to hold it and line this back up. I'm liking this method. I'm going to do that for a bag I make from scratch, I think. It's very clever. And then I'll stitch that together. I'm all done. And it naturally goes back into the same fold. Get some more clips. And see how it goes back into the same fold here? So just put it back in. Make sure it's up to the corner. And I'm going to stitch that all back in. It's folding naturally that way. Okay. And there, look at the transformation of that bag. So it's totally different than what it was. A lot of fun and very, very, very easy. So if I wanted to, I could have unpicked the back of this and I could do wool stitching all around here. But I'm going to leave this one because I think it's very kiwiana. So it's got the kiwi fruit and the um, kiwi. and But I've transformed the front and it's a really good solid bag. So that's just a little bit of fun for you to do with all your rubbish threads that you've been saving up for years that I've been telling you to save up. And if you start using a sewing thread and it keeps breaking, empty it out and throw it in here. Or just do what I do somewhere. I throw the whole lot in there. Here it is here. I throw the whole lot in there. And then when I'm ready to sew, I can just use that as a pretty one on top. So if it doesn't sew very well, and you'll know if it doesn't sew very well, because look, 
as soon as you try and sew, it'll break because it's not a good quality thread or it's old. This is called Super Twist and it um, it's a very old thread, but it's it's no longer used for sewing. But it's very, very nice to use it in your spark as a sparkly thread. Okay, so I hope there's something in there you've enjoyed. And I have one thing to show you. Because I'm going off to Benina University, I had a singlet top I wear under t-shirts that I really did love. So it was dead. So I unpicked all the lace off the bottom. I cut another bit of fabric out and I have made a new top within half an hour and I sewed my lace onto the bottom even though my lace is an off-white and my top is white you don't see my top all you see is this pretty bit of lace on the bottom of my t-shirts so it's just a really easy way of having a layer underneath the t-shirt and I've used our double folded elastic binding and I've just zigzagged it on on the very edge and I've made myself a nice fresh new top. And do you know what this is going to be used for now? A rag. So don't go throwing it out. It's lovely cotton and it will be really good for a soft rag, but it was ready to go in the bin. But my lace, honestly, this top would be probably 10 years old, but there is nothing wrong with the lace. So I've reused the lace onto a nice fresh bit of fabric and now I've got a nice new singlet top to wear under my t-shirts. So you know upcycling is a great thing but look how sad it was. It was really really sad and really ready to go in the bin and I hadn't been wearing it because it was so bad but I've made a new one. So there you go. So it's got a nice, what's good about it is it's got like a swimwear back so you don't get hot but when you wear your light t-shirts over top of it, you've got an extra layer. And what it does is it just lengthens your t-shirts. So it's a really nice thing to make. So that was a very easy fix from an old top to make a new top. So I hope you have been inspired. So there you go. And I will see you when I get back from Benina University in Texas. And I'm sure I'm going to have loads and loads of things to show you. So I'll see you next month.